So I mean, we have extreme evolve already, so it's not earth-shattering news. Devel. Oh, uh, yeah? Did you want to come back on that? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, what Alan said is uh, kind of right, and I'm, uh, with the whole thing, uh, with the whole uh, press thing, I'm still thinking about the uh, Potholders video, which came out a couple of uh, weeks ago, I think, uh, where he talked about uh, the fact that uh, the press is also getting uh, things uh, uh, wrong with uh, uh, like the amount of hurricanes to expect uh, due to global warming. It's just uh, kind of strange uh, how that uh, happens with the press. Yeah, yes, well, uh, and the reason is the reason is is that the press has to sell papers, so it has to be sensationalized. Now, science, by its very nature, uh, detaches itself from from emotions. Okay, we don't sensationalize things as a general rule. I mean, maybe you know, NASA is running out of funding; they're becoming desperate. Maybe that's what happened. I don't know. But as a rule, science is <coughs> not sensationalized. We remain, you know, without emotion for these things. We don't have an attachment of faith. We are not preserving the status quo. As a matter of fact, the only way to make it as a scientist and to have your own personal notoriety and become world famous is to challenge the status quo. So it's not like what they what they said on the, you know, Ben Stein's movie where they have to you know, protect this belief system that all scientists adhere to. No, it's just that that is evidently the way things really are. And if you come up with a new idea, you're going to be hotly challenged for it unless you can back it up. And that's exactly what happened with the tectonic plates under under Wagner. Now, Wagner, by the way, challenged the, pre, uh, the prevalent theory at the time, which was the expanding Earth theory, which that comic book artist is now promoting. And Wagner was the one that showed, no, it's actually tectonic movement. And he was ridiculed for this rather extensively when he first declared this in the 1930s. When I was in grade school in the 60s, was when the scientific community had finally come around and said, you know what, he's right. There we are. Um, thank you very much for the call. I'm, I am going to move on to uh, the next caller, but thank you for calling in. Um, and uh, we'll go straight on to the next person. Uh, this is uh, Dina. Um, again, you just have to excuse me. It takes me a few seconds just to find them in the list and actually add them in. And it's calling, and I think we've got Dina with us now. Hello, Dina. Uh, have you muted your microphone, Dina? You seem to be on the call, but we can't hear you. Dina. The American pronunciation of that name would be Deanna, I believe. I'm sorry. I can't actually even see the name because I've got a something over the top of it, but um, at the moment we're not hearing you. Um, I don't know whether you have muted your microphone or whether you don't have a microphone. Um, whilst we're trying to sort that out, just going back to the call that we called here, he's, um, he's, he's put his question in uh, a message for me. Um, it's probably wrong. Do you think scientists have a responsibility to make science more accessible to the general public? The public votes funds and support programs while blocking and denying others, i.e. still send research evolution, etc. If the public knew more about science, I'm sure they would support these programs. So are scientists dealing their own growth by not teaching science clearly in schools, and second, by not helping the average person see the benefits and the cool side of science? Uh, before I go to Aaron, um, I, I think that this is something that we discussed, um, if not in the last program, the program before, um, about how to get people more interested in science and um, whether the way it was taught at school was a problem uh, and whether the funding and PR departments of uh, science um, didn't really assist them a great deal. I, I, I generally don't know about this. I think to a large degree a lot of the general public simply aren't interested and yet whilst they have um, no problem whatsoever in deriving all the benefits that science and technology provides for them in the form of, you know, fancy mobile phones, flat screen televisions, the internet and uh, all that, that comes with that. Um, they just find the, the nuts and bolts of science too boring to be bothered with and would rather watch television programs about makeup and X Factor and stuff like that. Alan, what's your observations on that? I used to work in an office of uh, a couple of hundred people and I was a little surprised in the number of them that would tell me things like, 
Yeah, they, they weren't interested in any scientific breakthrough. Anything that I wanted to, to, to bring up from the news that I thought was uh, you know, noteworthy. You know, uh, people would tell me if it didn't involve increasing the amount of food on their dinner table, they didn't need to know it. They didn't care to know it. And I was really surprised how common that perspective was. And I, I generally considered that people were, as a rule, as intelligent as I am. And, it, and anything that I might talk about, they'll probably know about. And uh, someone, a friend of mine said that I was giving them much too much credit. And he says, for an example, take something that you, you think would be common knowledge and let's, let's poll everybody in the office to find out how common that knowledge is. And I said, well, okay, well, how about the speed of light? Now, when you take a college chemistry course, you absolutely have to know the speed of light in the first week because it's immediately relevant to everything you do. All the equations that you have to do, that you have to do, you have to know that speed. And so I thought everybody would know this. You know, whether it, whether it's in metric or, or imperial standard, it wouldn't matter. People are going to have some idea of the answer. And I pulled a couple hundred people in this office, and I was shocked that there was only one person who knew in either system of measurement what the speed of light was. And he happened to be the, the, the director of the of, of the network. He was the one that actually you know, built the entire computer network for the facility. He's the only one that knew that. So we, uh, I, I, there are two things that very quickly before the common disappears. The true Puka has posted a comment saying that he's often argued that the key to getting people to accept science is to make a direct uh, connection to things. Um, yeah, but it, it, it sounds like a good idea, but exactly how that's done is difficult. Um, we'll come back to that. But just in relation to surveys, is it not the case that um, every year a survey is done in America by one of the scientific bodies or organizations and it finds out that in answer to the question how long does it take the Earth to orbit the Sun, 50% of Americans do not know the answer to that question. Well, we, we, we typically get answers that are that bad and as I said I work in an office of people who sometimes tell me that they think that, uh, that, that schizophrenia is actually caused by demons or that the Sun revolves around the Earth. I commonly meet these people in real life and what the, the, the question began, if I remember correctly, we had already hinted at earlier in the show when we were talking about the reason that I tend to show as links, I'll show news stories that talk about the scientific research rather than showing the scientific research itself. And the reason that I don't is because even when you go to popular sites like PubMed, very often this, the, the story you're trying to link to is going to be something that's going to require a login in order for people to read, that they have to join some society of some sort in order to be able to access this material and actually read the, the, the published journal. In many cases, that's what it is. And when I started getting involved in this kind of uh, science advocacy act activism thing, one of my frustrations was that the scientists are, are complaining that all of these people don't respect science and they don't learn science, but if you want to try to look up the fossils for Eumerix, for example, you will never find a JPEG of that anywhere on the internet. You can only access pictures of this fossil if you log into specific websites and you know you grant them their access or pay pay their 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 fees for membership and then you can log into their site and view that this exclusivity this elitism on the behalf of the scientific community is certainly not helping them because churches will take anybody and they they They'll go door to door and push their stuff on you whether you wanted it or not. And anybody can absorb the kind of messages that they're sending, whereas science requires years and years of intense, advanced study. Yes, and I think some people just don't, as I say, don't like to do the hard work and just take the benefits. It's, but we're trying to just the next the caller in. Just, just one second now. I'm just trying to see whether we've got um, the next caller in. Diana, can you say something? Um, we're still not hearing anything here. Um, it's obviously not working. So um, I'll see if we've got one last caller. Uh, I note that it's um, coming up to ten o'clock. Um, yeah. And whilst I somebody do asked me, somebody asked me how to how to convince their, I guess, creationist family or or perhaps just non-scientific family that uh, that paleontology is a good career to follow. I don't have a. I've, I've never been able to explain that to my family. They 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 just don't grasp it. 
I mean, I mean, the fact is that some people find certain things interesting and some don't, but uh, the, there is a general sort of, uh, in my view anyway, in my experience, um, lack of interest. Uh, and I've always struggled to understand that because to me, I find most areas of science very, very fascinating, very interesting, but this is clear, clearly not a, a view that is shared by everyone. Um, you have to remember, sure. I live in a community where people will often say, more often than not, in fact, I don't want to believe that, and they'll believe something else. Well, it's not even so much that, but I mean, if you if you try and engage um, certain people in, in a conversation, uh, just one just one second, um, the we'll okay. we'll, we'll do it. If you try and engage people in a conversation about scientific issues or um, the like, you know, they they sort of like glaze over and it's they're, they're not interested and they'd rather talk about who's going to get through to the next round of X Factor. Um, exactly. Um, I don't I don't know how you deal with with that. Uh, I mean, people who popularise science, such as the Carl Sagan's um, and the like, may help, um, but I don't think that's a complete answer. Anyway, as I say, it's now 10 o'clock. We've got one last caller, so we'll move on to the next caller. Um, I'm not sure. But can I just call you Cart? Um, that's funny. All right. Hello, Cart. Welcome to the show. Thanks very much. Um, first, I'll start with a generic statement that I like all your YouTube channels. I know that's not really adding anything, but hey. Um, I, used to be a I used to be a theist, and yeah, you shouts were a big push in the right direction, in my opinion. Um, uh, just, just, before, just before you go on, um, I, 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 I'm very touched um, that you, you say that, and I'm amazed that, um, in particular my videos, would have any effect on anyone. but. Um, how recently then, uh, it must have been fairly recently that you... Yeah, uh, last, I'd that. say, year or so. Well, I, I wouldn't say I was particularly fundamental in my belief. I just, I, I almost accepted it subconsciously as if it's... Not that really I was indoctrinated or anything, I just kind of thought that that was the way you are. Did you, did you, you, practice, did you practice your beliefs in that way? Did you no, church I, or anything like that? The, I, I, the reason I say that is I didn't. I'd never, mm. I'd never went to church, really. But, uh, well, it was Christian, I'll say. But um, yeah. the thing is... Um, if I say I was asked in the census or whatever, I would say Christian, but I, I wouldn't be really sure about how I justify that. Sure. And uh, I guess the whole coming out of the closet thing is uh, a big thing. Even even in the UK, it's not as I say it's not as bad as the US. I haven't experienced the US, but uh, yeah, it, it's enlightening in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, if, if my personal experience, which I've touched upon um, a couple of times, um, I was so lightly indoctrinated that by about the age of 11, 12, it uh, disappeared without any pain or discomfort, and it had no, yeah. it had no knock-on effect um, yeah. socially, except for what, uh, very occasionally one or two people um, thought it was a bit odd that I was an atheist, but um, <laughs> in America I think it's a different system altogether. But anyway, let's move on to your question. Yeah, I'll quick look at this. Um, basically, um, I, I said in the, the PM that basically I, I did see you guys were one factor in me becoming atheist, but also seeing what the other side had to offer was a, was a, probably even a bigger kick in the, in the direction, what the other side was offering. And uh, I say the dishonesty, like, um, for, for example, uh, I can say the quote mining, the lying, and just, well, yeah, straw man arguments and things like that. And I was just wondering if they really do ever get called on that, because I've seen a lot of situations where maybe in debates or particular videos where someone's called into a Christian radio station or whatever and they'll say something which is incorrect or dishonest and then they're called just so hang on that's wrong it seems almost immediately they click and move on to the next thing as if it's just like they're going through a load of a magazine if you like to use an analogy of, a gun, of different arguments against them so they're not really registering the fact that that argument doesn't work anymore I well, they, they do to a degree. I mean, it, it happens very rarely. Answers in Genesis actually has an article where they talk about uh, religious arguments you should not use anymore because they've been disproved. Uh, Answers in Genesis also, on occasion, at least when they feel safe enough that it suits them, they will also point out that certain other evangelists like uh, Dr. Carl Baugh and Dr. Kent Hovind are for... Oh, doctors and speech marks. 